Greetings, this is Sandy Herrick. I'm a licensed resident in marriage and family therapy, and I am bringing a couple of points about infidelity. From a clinical lens, infidelity is a symptom of a problem within the individuals and their relationship. In other words, it's a symptom of a faulty relationship with individuals. Uh, so let's define what's a good relationship versus a faulty one. A good relationship is one in where individuals can be interdependent without crossing over dependency or enmeshment. It's a relationship in where individuals can enact activities in, in the interest of their own development of individualization uh, without having to uh, experience uh, controlling from the other person about their whereabouts and this and that, that they're stressed and that they can grow in other contexts with other people outside their person. Um, another definer of a good relationship is a sense of safety. And by that is meant that individuals feel safe in being vulnerable in the presence of their partner and that the partner is available in reciprocity um, for their partner to also be vulnerable as they can be vulnerable with the other partner because the other partner makes themselves available. So that's that reciprocity that it's the foundation of that is safety, sense of safety. Okay, so there's uh, five broad categories of affairs. Um, so when we are clinically looking at a couple, what is our goals um, for the therapy? That's very important. Why is this couple here? And, and a lot of couples come in saying, my partner cheated on me, fix them, make them not to. Um, which I understand, it, people say that because they don't know what else to say, but they do intuitively know that they need some extra help. So as um, a provider, I have to look into these five categories for clues. So is this an, an affair that was done as, as to avoid a conflict? So these are called conflict avoidance affairs. Or was it an intimacy avoidance affair? That's the second category. Or was it a sexual addiction affair? Out of those three, the affairs are very brief and they're numerous. Uh, on the conflict avoidance, the person is having some issues in their relationship and for whatever the reason, they're avoiding discussing it and they become anxious and they experience distress and they ameliorate that anxiety by stepping out. It could be even accidental. It's just that they're in an affect. It could be constant. And then there's this opportunity and what the heck, right? So, um, but it keeps continuing happening. So we have to, we'll just put that with the pin in the wall. The next one is the intimacy avoidance. That's an affair that was done to avoid intimacy. And that's weird because it sounds like the person just doesn't have the capacity to have intimacy with their partner uh, because they're certainly having it with some somewhere, somebody else, somewhere else. So with a third party, that's because we're defining and equating sex with intimacy. So this is really intimacy avoidance with the partner and the third party all together with the partner because if they were to have sex with that person and not have that connection, there's guilt. And then there is, you don't have to have the connection with the third party in here. So it's about a booty call, right? So intimacy avoidance. Then the other um, sexual addiction, the other category, that's a pathology. Um, it, it involves a person who has no capacity for certain reasons that are not part of this topic um, to make healthy sexual behavior decisions. The other two categories is the split self um, and the exit affair. The split self affair, it's somebody who picks a partner for optics because it's the right partner for their community that they operate under, or they have the right socioeconomics, the right last name, um, it could be for security. Uh, but a, there's something optical about it that that the individual is benefiting from. Um, and sometimes they enter into this relationship completely innocent, thinking that that's a good match, um, when it's not because the attention to being able to experience our emotional selves is not present. So the person ends up experiencing anxiety and develops an affair with the third party 
these affairs last anywhere between two years or longer. Uh, they're very profound. And when we're looking at that affair clinically, we're trying to explore what is it so important about the optics? You know, where is it coming from? Okay. And on the exit affair, it's almost like the individual is saying, I don't have the guts to terminate the relationship. I want you to do it. And when we're looking at this clinically, we're looking at what's the person um, resistance to assume responsibility for their desire to terminate. It also brings into illuminates, you know, when we discover that this is the type, the category of the affair, so next to the affair, it also illuminates the person's emotional intelligence or rather lack therefore of intelligence, emotional intelligence. Uh, this individual does not want to take responsibility for terminating their relationship. Um, they're very overt with their negative behavior and they have this affair to complement the negative behavior against the, the victim or the offended party. And when the offended party terminates their relationship, and even if there's a period of time of separation, if going down memory lane, they decide to re-engage, the offending party doesn't have to take responsibility for the repair work that needs to come, whether it's with themselves and or with the relationship, right? Um, doesn't have to take responsibility for it because it was the other person who wanted me back after the affair, right? So I don't have to work at it and, you know, and, and don't look at my phone because, you know, are you ever going to let it go? You know, and things like, why do you want me back? And so that is a very immature, emotionally mature individual. Um, it's almost like they're on an arrested development stage. And so there could be trauma that informs me that there is some trauma that they are unable to um, resolve or, or heal from. And they have been arrested in emotional development at a stage of immaturity and acting almost like a teenager. Um, okay, uh, so the prognosis of, of this affairs are very different, right? Um, the literature um, says that uh, the likely outcome on the worst side of it is that there will be other affairs official. You know, my grandmother used to say, um, well, I won't say that. Talking. Uh, she used to say, I'll say it. She used to say, the hog that eats poop uh, once, if he doesn't eat it the second time, it will at least come around and sniff it. And if you're with the dog, you will always get some of that poop because it'd be on their nerves all the time. So I'm trying to translate from Spanish to English, but you get the imagery. Um, so yeah, that is the likely outcome on those first three categories of the conflict avoidance, the intimacy avoidance, and uh, the sexual addiction. Um, so what is it that we're trying to do in therapy if that's the prognosis of those three categories? Um, we're trying to see the willingness of the person to work on themselves. So the offending behavior through the sexual affairs are, doesn't repeat. So we're not targeting the sexual affair behavior. We're targeting the anxiety, where it comes from. Um, what is it that they have in their script about confronting issues with a partner? What are the, what are the stakes on a conflict avoidance? Are they, if they confront an issue, they might find themselves out of a house or out of a relationship and they just cannot see themselves alone or, um, or whatnot. Um, same thing for intimacy and the sexual addiction is different. Um, so we have to put the family in recovery. The therapy in this uh, type of category, it's about recovering the family. There's usually public humiliation because an individual is addicted and so not meeting their obligations because they're investing their resources and time in the addiction. And then the lights get cut off, the mortgage gets defaulted, the job gets lost and calamity happens. And so the family suffers humiliation. So it's not so much that everybody else knows that the partner is watching porn all the time or um, 
renting hookers or whatever all the time, it's the the public humiliation about not being able to maintain their tenure um, as a family in the community. Let's see how that goes. So the split self, um, the lack of ability when we're looking at it clinically with the prognosis is that there could be a marriage or a relationship if it's not a marriage and it could be a nesting union um, that is empty. So there will be reoffending, absolutely. Um, if the individuals are, they repair their marriage and they say bygone be bygones, but nobody addresses the lack of ability to enjoy uh, oneself emotionally and experience oneself emotionally uh, without the optics. You know, what's my resistance in experiencing myself emotionally in absence of that optic? Um, the exit affair, um, when we're looking at it, uh, the prognosis on result loss, uh, the offended or the victim uh, experiences a lot of, it's almost trauma um, because there's, it's like when the world happened and then it's a fine, I'm out, you know. Uh, so in therapy, we usually try to help these individuals um, terminate their relationship properly in a way that is soothing to the offended or the victim um, and help them overcome that, get them unstuck from that emotional, lack of emotional intelligence, help them to get unstuck from that lack of emotional development as they seem to be in arrested development. So that informs me there was a trauma in here. So this is not all etched in stone and these are what we call conceptualizations. Um, formulations, clinical formulations um, around symptoms and diagnosis uh, as a result. Um, well, I'm not pairing this up with the diagnosis, I don't care what it's called, it is the symptoms that it's causing the lack of functionality towards a good relationship in which individuals can continue growing and thriving and having an enriching relationship um, in where they can experience interdependence and reliability, being reliable for each other for that interdependence without it being a dependency in where it's burdening to one of the two parties. Um, sense of safety um, and that individualization capacity to explore interests outside the other person's interest. Um, and again, the safety about the vulnerability and availability in reciprocity. Um, I hope you have enjoyed this topic. Um, the reason why I put this together is that a lot of people think that coming to marriage and family therapy after an affair, the goal is to repair the marriage and it's not. Sometimes the goal is to help the individual say their goodbyes, causing the least amount of injury um, and helping them move forward, resolving the root cause of what the behavior ended up being like. Uh, so when they move on to other relationships, they don't experience the same thing or if they're going to stay in the marriage that there is a safe space uh, for the individual to work on this root cause that caused the affairs and at the same time they can take the responsibility of doing the repair work that has to be done um, if you have any questions um, send me a message through facebook or uh, Contact me at my email, lifecoach.bodymind at gmail.com. Thank you and have a great day. Bye-bye.